Father, just for a few seconds, minutes of this time, help us as we bring forth that which you have laid on our heart, and we'll praise thee for Jesus' sake. Amen. In Luke chapter 15, there are three parables given of those that were lost. The first one is called the lost sheep. I would like to tell you about that for just a moment, the way I see it. As Christ stood there and talked to these people, he said, what one of you having a hundred sheep, if one of them were lost, would leave the ninety and nine and go out and seek for the lost one? I believe that Christ was telling us why he came to earth. There was a day in heaven when all of the angels gathered together. There was a time when the cherubs and the seraphs came together. And the archangels led the group before the throne of God. Ten thousand times ten thousands. And those that were there would cry, Holy! 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 And glory would fill the throne room of the Father. And as God looked over the heavenly host, he praised for their faithfulness. They had come all the time before him as messengers carrying on his word and his kingdom. But then suddenly there seemed to be a sadness. Have I counted you all? All that I have created? Yes, I created the archangel the cherub, the syrup, and all of the angel host. But there's one of my creations missing. There is no one from earth of the human family in my presence. I created them all right. I gave them my image and my likeness and made them sinless and holy. But something's happened. The enemy has deceived the woman and she in turn has given to her husband and they are lost in sin lost in a cold dark world lost down there without any hope lost without any way out son will you leave the glory of your throne son Will you go away from the shouts of the angel host? Will you say goodbye to the seraphs and the cherubs and go down and seek that one lost sheep? And the son came, not as a great king, not as a great monarch or dictator, but taking on the very flesh of the one that was lost laying aside his glory and becoming a man that he might be able to lead them back to the fold. What a world he came into. A world that would hate him. A world that would despise him. A world that would reject him. And a world that would crucify him upon a cross. But he came to seek and to seek that one lost sheep that one part of creation that was not present in the glory of God in his throne room. And what a condition that sheep was in. For it had no protection at all. No one to protect it from the enemy. The enemy had blinded it. The enemy had bound it. The enemy had made it its slave. And all the works of evil became a part of that one lost sheep. It had no direction to take. For they that were leading it were leading it farther and farther away from the kingdom and farther and farther away from the glory and farther and farther away from the heaven and closer and closer to hell with this lake of fire and brimstone. And what provisions did it have? For what could that world they were lost in really give? For sin only thrills the flesh for a short time. And even sin, after it's finished with its pleasure, brings forth death, separation. 
forever and ever. What hope was there for it? As Jesus went about seeking the lost, meeting a woman who was living out of wedlock, meeting a man that was in a sycamore tree, guilty of thievery, meeting one by night who had good religion but was not born again, coming to the leper, coming to the widows, coming to those that were demon-possessed, taken over by the very power of Satan himself, lost in his grip, and calling them, calling them to himself. For he came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And came not to them that were whole, but to them that needed physician. And as he'd walk through, he'd call, Here, sheep! Here, sheep! And he'd listen for the reply. And when he heard the reply of the sheep, he reached down and picked it up, laid it on his shoulder, and carried it home. And he said, Rejoice with me, for I have found the lost sheep. The Bible said among that great host in heaven, the cherubs who shouted with their holy, holy, holies, and the seraphims who gave their glory, and the ten thousands of thousands of angels that sang their praise, suddenly remained quiet, for there was more rejoicing in heaven over the one lost sheep that was found than the ninety and nine that needed no salvation. That's you. That's me. That's every believer here tonight. And he's still seeking for every sinner here tonight. And while we've marched these aisles and while we shouted the glory and while the band played to stir up our enthusiasm and the preachers talked about heaven and the singers talked about redemption. There were still some lost sheep. Lost sheep that would never stand in that throne room of glory. Would never stand among those angels and seraphs and cherubs. For they had not responded to the call of the shepherd. He called night after night. Sheep and walked up and down the aisles and went in and out the pews. Here, sheep. And he waited. But you didn't come. You didn't answer. You didn't reply. What a wonderful picture, but how sad it becomes. For in Proverbs chapter 1, it says, I stretched forth my hand. I wanted to lift you up and bring you out. I wanted to save you. I called to you. You didn't respond. You didn't answer. You did not regard me. Therefore, I will laugh when your fear cometh and mock at your calamity. And you will call, but I will not answer. And you will seek me but you will not find me. Right, right. To go out of pilgrim camp, to go out there not heeding the call of Jesus Christ, heeding the call of the Holy Spirit, to remain a lost sheep, to someday, maybe on a bed of affliction or in an accident, when your life is ebbing away, or with a sudden heart attack be snapped out into eternity and to be lost when you sat a few feet away from an altar where you could have found the shepherd and the shepherd could have found you and you would have had eternal life and all of the singing and the shouting that we had in this camp and all the praising of God in this camp will mean nothing to you in eternity it won't bless you. 
but it will torment you. For the Bible said that God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. He left his throne of glory to die on an old rugged cross. He wore a crown of thorns so that you can wear a crown of life. He shed his blood that you might be free. And he's calling you tonight. Hear sheep! Yeah. Yeah. Hear sheep! Yeah. Are you going to respond? Are you going to answer? Are you going to let him pick you up? Put you on his shoulder and bear you back to the Father's house? Safe for all eternity. Stand with me, bow your heads and pray.